Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mad Scientist Brewing Beer Education Series. April 22nd is National Beer Clean Glassware Day. So in honor of that, I'm going to be doing a topic on beer clean glassware. Uh, so what does beer clean mean? Uh, it means that you are, have a glassware that is sufficiently cleaned enough in order to properly serve the perfect pour of beer. Um, I'm sure everyone has at some point gone to a bar and ordered a beer and gotten it in a glass, and there maybe was little to no head at all on it, and probably a lot of little bubbles on the side of it. Uh, all of those are indications that the glass is not properly clean in order to hold beer, um, and it's kind of a, a sticking point for people uh, in the beer industry like me who uh, want to give the customer the best beer experience um, sensory wise as well and that's appearance is a large part of it so um, going into that how do you clean the glass so that it is beer clean so if you are going to use a dishwasher or another machine to wash glassware uh, you want to make sure that that machine is dedicated only to glassware you don't want to have any food or dairy product in there uh, if you're doing this at home, you probably don't have any option there, um, but that if you have a restaurant or a bar, uh, that should be the case where you're only washing your glassware in a dedicated dishwasher. You want to use proper detergents and sanitizer. If it's a high temperature machine that can operate at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, you won't need to use any sort of a chemical sanitizer. If you're using a sink to manually wash the glassware, uh, you want to first be sure that the area and the sinks are clear of any chemicals or oils uh, from other cleaning activities because those can have an impact on the, uh, the head retention of the beer and leave residue on the inside of the glass. Uh, once you've got a clean workstation, what you want to do is first empty the glass into the open drain. Don't dump any leftover beer into cleaning water uh, because that's just going to dilute the cleaning solution out. Then you want to wash with a sudsless detergent soap and brush in hot water in the first sink. You're going to be typically doing this in a two or three bay sink. Uh, three is best, but uh, oftentimes you don't always have three. Um, th again, this is primarily for people who are working in a bar or restaurant industry where you would have uh, multiple bay sinks like that. Uh, you can get special detergents available from bar suppliers. Uh, they should not be fat, petroleum, or oil-based. You want to scrub the glass with a brush uh, to remove any lipstick or other filth on the outside of it and rotate the glass on the brush to get the entire inside and outside of the glass cleaned. And don't forget to clean the bottom of the glass with a brush as well. Uh, next you want to rinse in cold water in the second sink and to do this you would rinse with heel in heel out. So you're going to effectively take the glass uh, with the bottom uh, or the heel of the glass, put it in first and drain it and then pull it back out. Uh, that way you're getting the, the rinse water all the way through the glass, not having any uh, air bubble or preventing any of that from getting in. Um, if you have time, a double dunk of doing that is recommended. The water in the sink, if possible, should be flowing and refreshed with an overflow tube if you have one, uh, rather than sitting stagnant with the rinse detergent in there. You effectively, this is a rinse sink, so you want to make sure that it's constantly being replenished and clean with no soap in there. Uh, lastly, you want to rinse in a sanitizer in a third sink, again with the heel in and heel out technique. You want to use hot water that's a minimum of 90 degrees Fahrenheit with a chlorine-based sanitizer mixed to at least 100 parts per million, or as the local required level. Uh, lastly, you want to dry the glassware so that air can circulate inside of it. Air-dried inverted glassware on a rack uh, for good circulation. Uh, something that's corrugated works really well. Uh, stainless steel wire basket as well. Uh, either of those are a good option. What you don't want to do is store them on a towel or a rubber pad or something that's going to keep it flat. Uh, you, that can transfer odors, uh, slows down the drying, and can transmit germs. You really want to have a good air flow going through at the bottom of it. Um, and then as you're going to pour, you want to rinse the glassware in cold water right before you put the beer in it. Uh, that's going to rinse out any remaining sanitizer or dust in the glass and allows for better head retention and formation. And it can help cool and wet the inside of the glass as well, uh, which if you've just done this cleaning step, if you're in a busy bar, uh, that might have a, a warm glass still. So you wanna make sure that the glass is at least cool uh, before you are pouring the beer into it. All right, uh, now a few ways that you can check to see whether uh, a glass is beer clean. And this is probably more applicable for 
uh, anybody at home who just might want to check this themselves before they pour a glass. Uh, so there's two ways you can do it. With uh, One is without the beer in the glass and one with. Uh, so without beer in the glass, uh, the first is the sheeting and spots test. Uh, and to do that, uh, I can't really demonstrate this at my desk here, but um, what you want to do is dip the glass in water and lift it out uh, and turn it in upside down. And when you do that, you're going to get, um, if it's beer clean, you'll get sheeting of the water all the way across in nice even sheets. Uh, you, what you don't want to have is droplets or spots of water on the inside. Uh, that means that those are spots that have an invisible film of something that hasn't been cleaned out. So again, you want to have nice, perfect sheeting all the way through. Uh, the second way with the empty glass is with the salt test, and this I can do here. Uh, so with a glass, uh, you want to wet it inside, and then you want to take some salt and kind of sprinkle that evenly all through. And I hope this works with kosher salt. I may actually not be able to do this properly with, probably is better with your fine table salt. But anyway, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, so yeah, don't use kosher salt for this test. But what you want to do is sprinkle salt evenly throughout the inside of the glass, and the salt is going to uh, not stick to any parts that are not beer clean. So you should have a nice even coating of uh, salt all the way through. Uh, anywhere that it is not sticking to means that you've got a, a film and so the beer is not beer clean. Or the glass is not beer clean, excuse me. All right, the other way uh, now is with beer in the glass. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. I just cleaned this, so if all goes well, this should be beer clean as well. So what you wanna, with the beer in the glass, look for uh, the proper head. And as you're drinking it, you're gonna have some residual lacing uh, as you drink the beer. So uh, this is a Saison, so it should have a pretty decent head, which does not immediately go away. That looks pretty good to me. All right, so head size, shape, and retention are the first thing you wanna check. Uh, beer clean glass is going to allow for that proper head to form. If you had a greasy film in there, the head would disappear pretty quickly, uh, just because the, the fat will help, or the fat will discourage the formation of the head. Uh, next, you've got the, the lacing as you're consuming the beer, so I'm not going to chug this particularly quickly here. But as you're drinking the beer, uh, particularly with something like a Belgian style like this, uh, if it's beer clean, you should see lacing, uh, which is ring, little rings of foam with each sip collecting all the way down through the glass. Uh, so if the lacing pattern is just kind of random all about, or there's no lacing at all, the beer is not beer clean. Uh, I have seen some glasses that are beer clean though, that uh, just that particular style of beer did not have any sort of a lacing. But in general, you should expect to see some sort of lacing from a good beer clean glass. Uh, lastly, you have uh, when you have dirty glass where you can have nucleation sites. This is probably the most common thing I've seen in a lot of bars. Um, when you have those films throughout the, the glass, you'll have uh, nucle nucleation sites for the CO2 bubbles in the beer to collect on the side of the glass. So you'll see on the side a lot of you know, clusters of little bubbles that are clinging in spots uh, where you've got that greasy film on there so the beer is not clean in that spot. Um, if you've done the salt test, that should be able to expose any of those before uh, having any beer in there as well. Uh, so those are the ways that you can check to see if the glass is beer clean and how to get a great start on your glass of beer. Um, since you're going to be out at a bar, presumably when you're doing this, well, you wouldn't be doing this test at a bar, but if you were out, uh, you would hope that you would get a glass of beer that is properly cleaned, and you might want to bring it up with the bartender if you have a glass that doesn't meet your expectation because everyone deserves to have a fine pint of beer or half pint or a snifter, whatever size you're drinking that day. All right, uh, that's it for me for this week. So until next time, uh, cheers.